What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out Fact or Crack Trivia with Attitude. This is for three to eight players, ages 12 plus. It'll take you about, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes to play. And in Fact or Crack, you will be trying to answer trivia questions either incredibly fast or just, you know, regular style. And it's either a simple true or false, or in this game, since it has Attitude, Fact or Crap. Let's open it up and check out how extreme it is. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Fact or Crap. Before we get started, I do want to mention that there is a lot more components in this game that I do not have pictured, uh, just because, you know, there's tons and tons of cards and tokens and all sorts of stuff like that, which is a good thing, but I just want to show you how the game is played for right now. So first and foremost, let's go to our handy dandy rule box. They put it on the insert of the box, which I actually kind of like, but some people are going to dislike. You'll need this once and probably never need it again. It's a very simple game, and I can show you how to play right now. Now, so in fact or crap, it's pretty simple. You're going to be trying to answer trivia questions by either saying that they are fact or that they are crap. If you do that correctly, you will gain points, which will win you the game. If you do that correctly and quick, you will gain more points, which will win you the game. But there's a flip side to that, which is if you answer the questions incorrectly slash fast and incorrect, you're going to lose more points. So we'll go over the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So component-wise, you're going to get these tokens right here. These are pretty much victory points. You can win and you can lose them, and yes, you can be eliminated from the game. That's one of the win conditions is that everyone else gets knocked out. Next, you're going to have, uh, how we play it, your buzzer cards, which are the fact and the crap. Because when we play it, they say that you just play the card out in front of you when you know the answer. But we personally just do it where you, you slap the table and you yell out the word. Like you're buzzing in a game show and say, fact or crap. And so that's how we do it. But you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to stop you unless, you know what, I might stop you. Give me your address, put it in the comments below, and if you play it that way, I will stop you because that's how I do it, and I don't want you to do it that way. It's me because I'm a special butterfly. Anyway, we're rambling. So next you're going to get a 30-second stamp timer, which will be used for the bonus round, which I'll show you how that works in a second. So what's going to happen is you're going to go around the circle, and each turn someone is going to be the reader. What they're going to do is they're going to grab the card and then they're going to, to read all three of the cards, uh, all three of the questions one at a time. So we'll just go ahead and do this. So no writer with a substantial science fiction background has won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Once you've completed, other people can buzz in or play their card and say fact or crap really fast. You don't immediately say if they're correct or not. Everyone else is going to play their card and then you let everyone know the correct answer. So the person who said who was the first person to do it is either going to gain two victory points if they were correct or lose two victory points if they were not. Everyone else, if they're correct, they'll gain one. If they're incorrect, they will lose once. So there's a little bit of a risk reward factor there. So that's one of the two types of cards in the game, just your regular old question cards. Now there is what's called the bonus round, which is the rush hour card. This is a really unique aspect because if you were reading one of these cards, you were going to pick one other person. So you just pick one person and you say, all right, I'm going to challenge you to this bonus round. Now how this works is you're going to be reading these questions as fast as you can. You're going to flip over the sand timer and you're going to read them off. Uh, so for each question the person you pick gets incorrect, then the reader is going to get one victory point. For each one that they get do get correct, they are going to get a victory point. So essentially, you have a chance to get victory points that no one else can get aside from one of the persons. You might pick someone who's not particularly good at the game, but there's a wide variety of questions, so it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, and that pretty much in a nutshell is the game. You're going to go until either all the tokens run out, at which point you will see who has the most tokens and they'll be the winner of the game, or you'll go until some, everyone runs out of tokens, which not, doesn't really happen too frequently, but I suppose it could if you're playing with a bunch of people who are less than intelligent. Uh, anywho, I will read some of the question cards so you can get a feel for some, what kind of questions you're going to get in the game. Picasso was once questioned by the police who thought he might have stolen the Mona Lisa. Fact, the hotel chain Best Western once had a string of hotels called Best Eastern. Fact, the internet was originally developed by Interpol to track criminals. That is crap. Fire extinguishers use fuel and oxygen to put out fires. George Foreman named all five of his sons George Foreman. Ancient Egyptians placed their hands on onions when taking oaths. 
Uh, here's a Rush Hour one. A team from Seattle has won Hockey's Stanley Cup. The screwdriver was invented before the screw. Crap. Australia's John Howard won a Nobel Prize for studying fireflies. So as you can see, there is a very wide variety of questions in the game, and that, in a nutshell, is how you are going to play Fact or Crap. All right, then. Fact or Crap, the trivia with attitude. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. If you don't like trivia games, you're going to want to steer clear of this. It is 100% pure trivia. There's no real strategy here whatsoever at all. I, I mean, maybe if you are the reader and you get a bonus round and you try and pick someone dumb, that's about the only strategy you're going to get in the game. Also, is with a lot of trivia games, you're going to run into the issue where if you play it frequently, you are going to see the same questions repeated. Now, there are lots and lots and lots of questions in this box, so I don't think it's going to be a big problem for most people, but it is something that I want to mention, especially with how this game works, because you actually read all three, car all three questions on the card, whereas in a lot of trivia games will have like three or four questions on the card, you only pick one to get that variety and that spice. With this one, you're going to read all the questions on the card, so you can run into that issue. Um, any other cons I have? Uh, I mean, y you know what you're getting here, you know? I, you really do. It's, it's a very simple trivia game that is clearly designed to be appealing to a mass market audience. And moving on to the pros, it succeeds at that, you know? Uh, the Factor Crap, I guess that is a brand that people know and people enjoy, and I've played this with non-gamers, and they had a lot of fun with it. You know, it was one of those things where we were playing drinks, and they stopped caring about the tokens after a while, and it was just fun to hear the different answers, because, uh, continuing on the pros, the questions and the trivia are, they're enjoyable. They're interesting little tidbits. They're like one of those things where you're like, oh, really? I didn't know that. Or, Whoa, that's kind of crazy. And there's a great variety of them. There's lots of different categories. It's not just, you know, it's not just nerd stuff or science stuff or math stuff. There's just tons and tons of variability here. Um, that's not the right word. Tons and tons of different content here. And it is relatively interesting. Now, if you're looking for this as a game night game, you're going to want to steer clear. Even if your, your group does like trivia games, it's still no real game here at all. It's, it's just as simple as, oh, do you think that's true? Do you think that's false? Are you fast? Are you not fast? And then you rinse, wash, and repeat. But for what the game is and what the game tries to be, it succeeds. It's simple, it's light, and to a lot of people, it is enjoyable. I personally, I enjoyed it. Would I ever recommend it? No. But I, would I rather play this over a lot of other trivia games? Yes. Uh, so overall, factor track, factor crap, is not terrible if you are the audience for the game. If you're not the audience for the game, then you'll probably be bored. And if you're a regular gamer who's played more sophisticated trivia games, then this one's probably going to bore you. But overall, not terrible. So, this has been my review of Fact or Crap. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what is the biggest lie that you have ever told and got away with it. Oh man, I just opened up a can of worms of myself. One of them I'm not going to tell you guys, because it's just way, way, way too out there. Uh, I don't know, when I was a kid I lied about being in the 9-11 building. It's such a stupid lie. I was like 12 at the time, too. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, no, I was like 13. Yeah. What was? Well, what the hell was I thinking? Who was going to buy that? I was taking an eye step test. I'm from Indiana. And I was going around telling people, telling people that. Oh man. But what's the biggest lie that you've ever told anyone? And let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.